Hi there, um, I'm Catherine. I am a puppet builder here in Sydney, Australia, and I wanted to, for my blog, uh, document my build process for a puppet kit from Monkey Boys uh, Productions in New York, USA. Um, I've noticed over the last month in the puppet world, the rising trend of puppet kits from various companies, um, various puppet makers that so that people who are um, at home and they want to make a puppet, we can't at the moment go to workshops because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic around the world. So it's a way of bringing supplies for a workshop to a participant, but then giving instruction either through a booklet or through an online workshop. But it's a way of, you know, encouraging the world to build more puppets because the world always could do with one more puppet. And so uh, there's been in the last month two kits produced by two different companies. One was uh, Puppet Pelts for a, work, a uh, workshop called the Puppet Makers Workshop. Um, that kit contained absolutely everything you need to make a puppet. So that would be um, everything from the pattern, the foam, the materials, all the way down to pins, uh, not a uh, blade to cut the foam, sewing needles, thread, everything you need, but also contain glue. And because that pup box contained glue, it could not be shipped to me in Australia because the glue is... Um, a chemical cannot be shipped um, safely. So, um, and the other box, the other kit came from Monkey Boys Productions. And that's the kit I bought. Originally, uh, was not available internationally, but I reached out to Monkey Boys and they changed it so that it could ship. And so this is pretty much the first box in Australia that we know of. And the box is here. I haven't unpacked it yet. But all I've done is, you know, taken out, um, just opened it so I can, you know, show you. Okay, so this is the box. It's quite long. Um, and it says, this is the pattern I bought, the Hubbub Pro Puppet Pattern in the colour of ocean. So it's blue. And so for, my first impression on seeing the box was, uh, gee, if absolutely, this uh, Prop Monkey Boys only have like five items that are not in the kit that you need to provide yourself. And my first thought on seeing the box was, wow, they must pack really well to fit everything you could possibly need into such a like thin-ish box. Now, I did order more than just the Pro Puppet Kit, the Hubbub. I did also order some additional items from their store and I'll unbox them too. So let's open the box. Starting off with um, a packing list with a nice note at the bottom. Appreciate the notes. So, um, so what I ordered was the Pro Puppet Kit. Um, I also ordered a sheet of their um, styrene eyes, vacuform eyes. I've also ordered a sheet of their vacuform noses. And I've also ordered a pair of their professional arm rods. The Pro Puppet Kit does not come with arm rods. That is something you would have to provide yourself. So a packing list. All right, so there's, I'll just take this paper out. There's a big um, bundle of paper, you know, to stop things moving around in the box. Okay, so what's first? Okay. All right, a plastic bag. I'm now going to move to my um, second camera because I actually have set up a second camera so that you, can, everyone can see. So, hello people. Okay, so I'll just move my camera down so you can see less of my computer and more of, and let's do this a double view so you can see what I'm saying. Camera view, there we go. All right, so, so, in a bag. Ooh, wow. Okay, first thing I'm seeing is the eyes. So I'll just show them on camera here. Um, so it's vacuum, so it's a sheet of um, styrene. 
So it's back you forms. I'll show this camera. And so lots of different eyes. There's oval eyes, round eyes, very shallow spoon-like. This is nice. I've never worked with um, oval, large oval eyes like that. Mm, interesting. Um, I bought these because I haven't had a chance yet to work with a company that sells uh, vacuform eyes. I don't have a vacuformer yet, but that's really interesting. Uh, oh, this is their noses. So I like how the sheets are marked. So if there's any confusion. So it seems to be a pair of almost everything. Oh, that's really sweet. I like that heart shaped nose. That would be really good for like, like a rabbit or cat. But that's really cute. Um, that's really nice. Yeah, that's, that's me. Um, and also their sheets of starry eyes are not that expensive. Okay, what else is in here? Oh, a sheet of pupils, um, sticky back, nice felt, nice velvet, very nice. Um, it's all pre-cut. You can sort of tell if it is um, on the other camera. You can sort of see the imprints. So there's a couple of pairs of large pupils, some really really small ones. Really small ones are down here in the bottom. I can feel them, and sort of see a trace. Um, but there's, you know, but so it's really nice black velvet. You can see the um, imprint. Oh, some, what's this? Oh, some uh, information leaflets on working with their eyes and noses. Some. Okay, how to cover them with fleece, how to pin them on, <coughs> how to cut them out. That's useful to have. Comes also with <coughs> um, oh, a packet of fleece, little Ziploc bag of fleece um, to cover the eyes with to make eyelids. Um, very nice. Okay, well, that's it for that container. Okay, so I'll put those back away. Okay. And I'll put these to one side. What's next in the box? Oh, next in the box is the arm rods. Okay, so these are their professional arm rolls, so they're like straight. Interesting that they don't, um, I'm used to arm rolls that um, bend like around in like a square, like a, fl like a flag. Um, okay, are there copper clad welding rods? I can see spots where the copper is shining through. Um, I can also see the stamp mark on this rod right there. There's a flat stamp mark. So that's how I know these are copper clad welding rods. Also the fact that there's a few spots where copper is showing is that these are spray painted. They're not um, covered in heat shrink. I normally cover rods in heat shrink because some puppeteers uh, cross their rods and when they rub against each other, paint run comes off and it's really hard to put back if the rod is permanently attached to a puppet. You risk getting more paint or spray paint on the puppet. So I normally cover mine in heat shrink, but these are just painted or spray painted. Well, the handles are covered in um, heat shrink. It actually gives them a nice um, rubber feel. Handles feel like their wooden bow. Very nice, very interesting. Um, if 
if I use these on my puppet that I'm going to be making, I will probably cover these with heat shrink because um, I don't want this paint to rub off. And because when the paint rubs off, it will expose um, the copper color, um, which will show up on camera. So <coughs> very interesting. Um, they're the heat shrink handles. Very interesting. And they're quite light rods, they're not overly heavy. Okay, so that's all the extra stuff I bought. Now it's time for the actual kit. First thing I'm going to pull out, oh, the folder. So each kit comes with a folder. I shall put it down on the table. And in the folder is, what's this? Oh, this is a, oh, a design sheet. Okay, nice. Okay, so it's a design sheet for the puppet. So you can draw your design on in different views and plan your puppet. Nice, I like patterns that do that. What's this? Oh, it's thick. Oh, instructions, how to make the puppet. Okay, it's got pictures, you know how to do things. Okay, oh, here's the puppet. Um, so it's gonna be really interesting. So lovely, it's a decent thick little booklet. Look forward to reading it. Put it back in the folder. So I don't lose it. Okay, a little flyer here about uh, professional arm rods. In case they did buy those, so maybe because I bought them, that's why they're in there. Maybe. Oh, this is the pattern. Okay, so the pattern is on really large paper. Uh, it's much bigger than Australian A3. I would say this is probably be 17 inches. So um, <coughs> what I normally do in my puppet practice is I never ever cut up the original pattern. I always make a photocopy and glue that onto cardboard and I keep the original pattern uncut. That way puppet making can be a little destructive over time to the patterns. So if I have to replace a piece, then what I do is I actually um, will like go back to the original, make another copy of it and glue that onto the, and keep going. Um, I never cut the original pattern. So this is gonna be a challenge to photocopy, but what I probably will do is like photocopy it in one direction. It'll get cut off because it's longer than A3. I'll turn it around and photocopy it in the other direction. It's a little bit more wasteful, but it's the best way to do it because I don't want to mess with scaling because then you, that's when you fall into problems. Okay, so there's um, information on the wire templates, you know, the armature to make the hand. That's kind of interesting. Oh. The arms are really short. Okay, I've never seen, I'm not used to arms being that short. Um, this is my very first experience with this, these patterns. I normally do like, I either make my own patterns or um, I typically use uh, my favorite patterns in my whole career have been uh, Project Puppet. Um, I love Project Puppet patterns. And actually looking at these patterns, because I'm so used to like Project Puppet, uh, patterns is that these have a beautiful sort of hand-drawn quality to them. It's not like Project Puppet patterns and a couple of other puppet patterns that I've used over the years. I can think of like Adam Krudinger. They're all um, been drawn like on computer and illustrate. And that's what I do with my patterns is I redraw them in Illustrator. But these, if I just hold a piece, you can see this has got this beautiful sort of hand-drawn, hand-traced quality to it. The paper is also um, really smooth paper. It's almost like a, a semi-gloss. 
and it's also quite thick because you meant to use these to make your puppet but I don't but um, I really like this um, you know this hand-drawn quality it's sort of got a feeling of um, you know handmade handcrafts you know craftsmanship I've got that this, this is something very different to me and I, I quite like the change so that's everything in so you get a folder with everything in it so and it actually has little um, arrows and things you know showing you know how the arms are tied on and what's in the mouth and the head and all that so that's quite nice so okay so folder of instructions all right this right out of the box. Okay, these are all the materials. <coughs> I'm going to put the box on the floor so I have a little bit more room to work. Okay, so it comes in a, a bag which is labelled with the pattern. Okay, take out the biggest thing first. Foam. Oh, this is reticulated. This is like the foam to use for making puppets. Uh, it's also called Scott foam by some uh, foam manufacturers, uh, filter foam, um, but the pore size is everything. This is the good stuff. This is the uh, 30 pores per inch. Now, if I bring it up to the camera, you can see like how tiny these holes are. So if you were to go, because in Australia, this foam is really hard to find. Um, I know of one place, it's not even in my state. Um, so for me, like getting to use real reticulated foam that is the right pore size, this is why I would buy this kit, is that it is, um, just alone, this alone, this foam is the hardest thing to get here in Australia, which is why these kits are so good and why it's a sad that the the other kit from uh, Puppet Pelts is not possible to ship because for people internationally who are not in the US, these materials that the foam puppets are traditionally made from, you can't get them um, or they're called something completely different. Like I've spent the last... Um, I've been building now for 17 years, actually like translating or when I've been in the US and I've been with puppet making friends or at a workshop like Beyond the Sock, um, you know, I would save little scraps of uh, the actual materials to bring home to Australia and go to our suppliers and go, okay, this is what I'm looking for. What is it? And then quite often I would find it's come called something completely different. So when you're Google searching or, you know, you're talking to suppliers and you're saying, oh, I need Scott foam. In, in internationally, they go, what? So, so this is actually the real stuff. Lovely. And um, a decent length of it too. So, so that's great. So I was going to roll it up again. I'm excited. This is, this is why I buy this kit is, is just to be able to use real materials. Okay, what's next? Okay, some, it's a canvas weave. This must be the duck cloth. Um, I think, I think it's showing up there on the top view. See that this canvas weave type fabric. I think this is duck cloth because I have been sort of following the list and talking about this with my puppet making friends and, and I'm going, what's duck cloth? Um, this must be it. Okay, I wonder what that's for, but that's in, that's in the box. So I put that there. Okay. It's got a sp slight sparkle to it. This must be the velour. It's got no stretch. So this is what would this is what goes inside. So if you look at the puppets behind me, these are two of puppets I've built, two of my favourite. Um, but you can see that red colour um, inside their mouth. This would be for this puppet would be black. 
it is very um, covered in peel, like it's got a lot of um, stuff all over it. But it's sort of, you can see there's a bit of a, a glisteny shine to it, but I wonder how hard it's going to be to clean all that up to, before I put it in the puppet. Um, or I might substitute the actual suede that I use on my puppets for this, because if it's going to be hard to clean up, then yes, yeah, so it's, you can sort of see it's covered in stuff. Don't know if that's from like materials inside the bag or if that's how it was on the roll. But I'll have to see if I can clean it up. All right, next. Ooh, it's shiny. Oh, this is satin. Oh, this must be, oh, this is for the puppeteer's arm sleeve. Inside a lot of puppets, there is a sleeve that you can just slide your hand into, helps the puppet just slide onto your hand. Um, also protects the inner side foam from like your skin, um, which will cause the foam to deteriorate faster. But this was, this is satin. This is very nice. I normally use um, like lycra, um, which has a bit of stretch to it. Okay, what have we got here? Chipboard or cardboard, we call this cardboard, um, but it's quite sturdy cardboard. It's, um, I wonder what that's for. Maybe the, um, my puppets I use, um, I put a palm plate in because I normally affix the um, arm rod to it. So maybe this is for the palm plate. I haven't read the instructions yet, so I don't know, but Okay, so you get a piece of chipboard. Okay. Looks like a three mil plywood or three ply. It's not, not traced or drawn on. So I'm going to have to find a saw. Okay, that's one of the things I think was in the list of um, like five things that you needed was a, a saw to cut out the mouth plates. Cool. Okay. Oh. oh, wow. Okay. This, so this is what I mean by you get everything in the box. Pins. So I, I have, I make puppets, so I have lots of pins, but it's really cute. I like get sent out pins. So if you don't have pins, it comes with pins. Um, cute. Nice little bag of pins. I think these are washers are to attach to the um, for the shoulder of the arm. I normally use like doll joints, so I think that's what these are for. So it's metal um, washers. What's this? Oh, they send out sewing needles. How cute! Nice. I can I can always do with more sewing needles. Single edge razor blades. Now, I want to see this. What have they sent? Oh, they're persona blades. Okay, all right. Persona blades. Um, a lot of puppet makers in the US, the like the really great ones, um, use persona blades to carve puppets to. Um, cut their foam. Persona blades are like, you know, the thing to use, except um, they're, not, they're not available here, not available in Australia, um, or are ex so extraordinarily expensive to ship in for a tiny box of five um, that it's not worth it. I normally have to make do with floor scraper blades from my hardware store, but to use persona blades, I haven't used persona blades um, in years. I'm really excited to use these. Oh, that's, oh, made my day. It's been so long since I used persona blades. And of course, it's true. Be very, very careful with them. They are very sharp if ever you get to use them. All right, persona blades. What's next? All right, so. 
burning. Oh, wow. Commercial bone channeling. And this boning is so different. Um, Australian, the boning I've had access to in Australia is um, it's very textured. Um, it's, and this is quarter inch, I think. Not very, um, yeah, I think this is quarter inch because it's about six mil wide. Um, okay. So boning is used in puppets to hold like the body shape out, um, but not add weight to the puppet. Um, but it's even come with the casing. It's commercial casing too. Oh, nice. I'm sort of, for me, I love like hardware store, fabric store is a place for me to be, but I've never gotten to use commercial casing. I'm excited to try it. Um, I normally make my own um, boning casing. I take strong strips of fabric, fold it over, stitch. Um, so it's not as pretty and beautifully made as this. Um, well, that's exciting. I'll just put that there. Some craft eyes uh, with safety washers. These are safety craft eyes. Black, I'd say they're probably 30 mil. Cute little butt, little eyes. Some armature wire. Oh, for the hands, for posable hands. Um, so they give you a length of that. Okay, block of foam. Oh, it's squishy, so it's poly foam. Hmm, I wonder what that's for. It's not, it's only, um, <coughs> I'd say, about an inch and a quarter thick. Not very good. Let me see, in Australian, 40 mil. It's 40 mil, 40 mil thick. So yeah, it's about an inch a quarter. Um, okay, so a block of polyfoam. Interested to find out what this is for. Okay, put this to one side. Some rope. This must be for the arms to attach them to the body. Um, it helps, uh, you know, the, the arms have strength if um, they've got a rope through the middle. So a length of rope. Okay, pencil, half a pencil with gaff tape wrapped around it. So, so you don't have to buy um, gaff tape for when you join your mouth plate together. That would be my guess. And um, pencil, use always, pencil is always useful. Okay, spool of thread to match the blue I have purchased. How much thread? 229 meters, 250 yards. Well, plenty of thread. Nice. What's next? Is there anything else? Okay. The fabric. This is my very first experience touching this fabric. This fabric is the new Nyla fleece. Um, Nyla fleece is the new fabric that is replacing all forms of what was known as Antron nylon fleece. Um, Antron nylon no longer exists. It's not milled anymore. Um, so um, this is the color I ordered, Ocean. It's so soft. But it's not like looking at it, like um, my, I still have some, um, what was known as Antron nylon fleece. And <laughs> that fleece um, sparkles under the light. It like, it's like glistening. And this doesn't, it does not have that sparkling quality. Um, it's very different. It's still very soft, still very, 
um, like thick, like the pile on the edge here, if I bring it up to the camera, you know, is really thick. So it's good for hiding seams. And the dye color is lovely and even. Um, let's see, how much is there? Oh, really? There's, call that about a metre. It's a metre by a metre. I haven't looked at the pattern yet, so it's definitely a metre by a metre because it's, um, it's definitely a square. I just checked the diagonal. Hmm. And when you fold this over, because um, some pattern pieces Oh, first thoughts are, I hope there's enough fabric because you've got to make um, two halves of the head, two halves of the body, four arms, because you've got top and bottom of the arms and they've got to be, it's got to be, this is why you double over fabric is that, well, I'm glad they call this a pro kit because for me as a professional puppet builder, I'm going, um, a beginner, there's no, I don't think there'll be really much fabric left over. And so you wouldn't want a beginner um, making the mistake with the fabric of, you know, putting pieces up the wrong way and then, then there's no fabric to, um, so stay tuned on this one when I get to the part about laying out the pattern pieces because I'm hoping there's enough fabric. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure, I know Monkey Boys have tested this pattern out a lot but um i was hoping to do you know a couple of extra features in the same fabric i hope there's enough it's going to take a bit of engineering um <coughs> but it's going to be interesting it'll be a challenge and that's why this is a pro kit it's supposed to be an interesting challenge but um yeah so that's that's everything in the um bag the bag is empty now so yes so that's the official unboxing of the hubbub kit from monkey boys um i'm excited to start uh cutting and tracing and reading through the instructions and working it all out now i've got to go and prepare the pattern but um this is going to be an interesting adventure. So we'll see you along the way. Bye.